This morning, as you know, with the theme of Memorial Day in our hearts and our minds, sacrifice. We talk about sacrifice. We remember those who laid down their lives so you and I could enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy today. I was reminded a couple weeks ago in a, in a church service that someone made a sacrifice for me to, to be here today. Someone made a sacrifice for you to have gas in your vehicle this morning. Someone made a sacrifice for you to get that cup of coffee this morning. Someone made a sacrifice so you could enter in into this house and worship. And most importantly, the King of kings and the Lord of lords made a sacrifice. That you and I would have this opportunity to be here today. I love that song because it talks about a beautiful exchange. That on the cross, King Jesus took on death. He took on the the grave. He took on the curse of sin. And he exchanged that. For renewed relationship with the Father. That you and I can come boldly before the throne of grace. You don't come meekly before the throne of grace. You don't lackadaisically come, you know, before the throne. You come boldly before the throne of grace. That you may receive what? Grace and mercy in time of need. And then that song continues to say, holy are you God. If you've been around me for a time or two, you know that I love Revelations chapter 4. And if you didn't know, now you know. But, you know, for a few seconds, just imagine you're um, John in the island of Patmos. You are being persecuted for spreading the gospel. And you have this vision, this beautiful vision of the throne room of God. The Bible says that the four living creatures are there, worshiping the Lord. And the 24 elders lay down their crowns and declare. That he is worthy to receive all praise, all power, all glory, all honor, all blessing. It is his, amen. And because of that sacrifice, because of that beautiful exchange, we can be in God's house this morning. I'm already sweating and I even haven't started preaching yet. Glory to God. That you and I have this amazing opportunity to, to lift up our voice. To declare that he is holy. To declare that he is good. To declare that he is worthy. I don't know what's on your agenda this afternoon. Maybe there's a lake house with your name on it. Hallelujah. Maybe there's a friend's uh, lake house with your name on it. Maybe there's a boat and you're going to go tubing. They need to find a different name for that. I mean you're on a tube, but I guess. Oh, well. To be continued. That's a a rabbit trail. We'll, we'll, We'll park that vehicle. Maybe there's a grill with your name on it. Hallelujah. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It is a spiritual and a physical principle. But as your mind scatters or plans for what's ahead, maybe you're stressing out because you have to prepare all the food. But for this moment, right here, right now, we began by singing praise the Lord. You know, I, I love all those songs. There's so many of them. When it comes to music, don't get me started. We will be here all day. But it says... I won't be silent. My God is alive. How can I keep it inside? Flow. Last Sunday we celebrated Pentecost Sunday. And I don't know about you, but there's this cool thing that happened in Acts chapter 2. And there was a overflow that changed the world. Amen? My God is alive. How can I keep it inside? Mm. So before I go on many, many other rabbit trails, let's, 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 let's do an introduction. Hello. Good morning. If you're not uh, like, who this? Question mark. Have you ever had a new phone number and then, you know, someone called you and you're like, who this? Uh, my name is Steve. I've been part of LifeBridge for 13 years now, I believe. So um, this is home. God is moving. Hallelujah. I want to give honor to our pastor, pastors, I should say, Pastor Bill. You should call him Bishop. You know, he's overseeing uh, like 50 churches now. So start calling him Bishop Bill. And our dear mom, Pastor Grace. We love you, mom. Thank you for standing in the gap for Pastor in, in his absence. Uh, I just want to honor the, the leaders of this house. I want to honor you as the, the, the congregation today coming to, to spend your time with us today. 
Uh, and I have the privilege to share the gospel today. I don't take it for granted. It is, it is a blessing to share the gospel with you. Amen. It is a, it is a blessing to, to challenge you to get to know God better. Amen. It, 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 it is a blessing to, to just be, to be with you in this time. As, as we are worshiping, I truly believe that there is an open heaven over us this morning. For, your, for, for those of you who are like, what's that? All that means is I, I believe the, the atmosphere is, is right for God to move. The, 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 the atmosphere is ripe for a harvest, amen? Do you know what that, that's what Pentecost was about? It was a harvest. It was a celebration of the early harvest. And then on top of that, the, the Holy Spirit comes and falls on the disciples and engulfs them. And, and 3,000 are added to that day. Wow, glory to God. And so I just pray that in this time together that you will be challenged. But more than that, that you will encounter God in a way that you cannot deny. That you will have an encounter with King Jesus this morning. That you will leave here overflowing. That is my prayer for you this morning. That is my hope for you this morning. And the title for this morning is Expectation for Miracles. I don't know if the worship team uh, slid into my DMs. For those of you who are like, what's, what's that? I don't know if they uh, checked out my messages, but it's like every song was about expectation. Praise the Lord because he's moving. Lord, you are worthy because you are moving. There was, there's an expectation. There's an angst that the children of God, all creation is crying out for a move of God. That, that there's an expectation for us as a church body for God to move. Perhaps in your own personal life, there is an expectation for God to move. And so if you have your Bibles with me or if you can turn uh, to the screens here. Or if you have your personal device and tech team, I apologize. I'm going to uh, do Two more verses before what I sent you, so I guess you listen for those two verses, and then we'll jump into what will be on the screen. We're turning to Acts chapter 4, verses 21, and it says, And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people, for all were praising God for what had happened. For the man on whom the sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. And now you can turn to the screens. Verses 23. When they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Verses 27. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the Bible says, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. Look at your neighbor and say, uh-oh. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with what? Boldness. Now you understand my preaching style. When it comes to the word of the, of the Lord, I, I don't mess around. Look at your neighbor and say, ain't nobody got time for that? So this morning, Acts chapter 4, we read there, verses 21 through 31. There's a backstory here. There are these two characters the Bible calls Peter and John. Look at your neighbor and say, Peter and John. You're going you're to become BFFs with Peter and John by the time we're done. And Peter and John were, it was, a, it was a regular day, they were on their way to the temple for the daily sacrifices. And something happened at a gate. It was no ordinary gate. 
You know, especially for those of us who have grown in Fort Wayne, not, not too many places have gates on them. Unless, you know, you're in one of those neighborhoods where, you know, the driveway is a half a mile long before you get to the house. Maybe there's a gate. But some of us who grew up in other parts of the world, um, not because everyone is a thief or because uh, everyone is a bad person, but some of us grew up in neighborhoods where there were a lot of gates. And you kept people out, and that was the purpose of the gate, to, to keep, you know, certain characters out and for those who really had access to, to get in. But the Bible says that there was a crippled man at the gate, beautiful. It was a beautiful gate. I believe it was pleasant to look at. But at this, uh, the beautiful gate, the Bible declares that Peter and John were on their way. And there was a crippled man, the Bible says, who I believe at that point in his life, because of his uh, physical disability, uh, someone took the time, made a sacrifice, to bring him to the gate beautiful every day so he could do what the Bible says in Acts 3, to ask for alms. To ask for money. And the Bible says that Peter and John were there and they saw this man. And they looked at him. And they said, and, they, and they, the Bible says they specifically addressed him. And I'm sure that crippled man was like, man, today is a good day. I'm going to be able to go to McDonald's after this and eat a McChicken. Or a McRib. Or, uh, you know, I'm going to Arby's because they have the meat. Uh, or if he's a vegetarian, um, what's a vegetarian fast food restaurant? I can't think of any right now. But he went somewhere. Um, and the Bible says that they, they, they looked at him. And this man was excited. He was like, yes, someone finally looked at me. Because in his condition in that time, in those times, he was looked down upon. It's as if he had a curse. And so people probably walk by him all day, every day. All day, every day, right? Uh, and the Bible says that when they looked at him, and I'm sure he was getting ready to stretch out his hand and receive whatever they could afford to give him for that day. But the Bible declares that Peter looked at him and said, silver and gold I have none. Look at your neighbor and say, it's about to get dangerous. But the Bible says, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible says that the man didn't just sit there and was like, huh? The man says, the man leaped. Peter stretched out his hand, held that brother up, and the man leaped. The man leaped. Come on now. The man leaped. Forty years, at least, in that condition. The man leaped. And the Bible, a few verses later, continues to say, and he was walking and leaping and praising God. Some of you remember that old song, silver and gold, I have none. I don't know the rest of it, but I just remember there's a walking and leaping and praising God. Say it with me. Walking and leaping and praising God. Today you'll be driving and someone will cut you off and you'll just be like, in the name of Jesus. Walking and leaping and praising God. And I tell you, this man's life was changed. It was no longer the same. And so Peter and John have this man. The people see there's a miracle taking place. They enter into the temple and they begin to preach the gospel. The Bible says that God was moving. It was miraculous. It was powerful. But then, say with your neighbor, but then. There are some characters, other characters. They were the Jewish leaders, specifically the Sadducees. I heard a preacher say they were sad, you see. That's not a Steve original, you know. I can't trademark that one. But these men, the reason, uh, and if you're like, who are Sadducees? Again, who does question mark? Uh, Sadducees were religious leaders who specifically had issues with the things of the supernatural. And also, they really had a problem talking about the resurrection. It was no bueno. It was not good. You did not bring up the resurrection with them. And so here they are. They're hearing this uh, the, the gospel of Jesus being preached, that he was, that, that Peter is, is preaching and is saying, you know, you've seen what God has done for this man. This is Jesus who has healed this man. And so repent, the times of refresh, that, that, that your sins may be blotted out, and that times of refreshing may come upon you. And, and he's, he's, he's charging the, the men and the women who are listening to, to turn their hearts back, back to God. And so here are the Sadducees and the Jewish leaders, the high priest, the Bible says, and, and they have a problem with that. Uh, there, there, there is, uh, the, the waters are a little bit too, too uh, uh, what's the word? Um, 
of being stirred a little bit too much. The, the, the cloud that day or the, the, the weather that day was, was a little bit too exciting. Um, the, the, the meeting that day was a little bit happen. It was the praise that day was on point. Something was going on and, and, the, and the Jewish leaders were not happy with that. And so the Bible says they arrested them because a man was healed. And because they were preaching the gospel, they were arrested and they spent the night in jail. And then we come to Acts chapter 4, and they bring them back to the Sanhedrin, which was uh, the, this room where it, it was like almost like a semicircle. And you had the leaders, uh, the Jewish leaders and, and uh, religious leaders, you know, in, in, in kind of like, a, think like a courtroom, where they're sitting up top, and then the, the Peter and John and the crippled men are, are down there, so they're looking on them, you know, they're kind of snooty. You know, they, they drink their tea with, you know, the, the pinky lifted up or something like that, I don't know. If you're British, I apologize. I'm not trying to make fun of you. And um, they're asking them, by whose name or by what power do you, are you preaching this? What, is, what, what happened? What happened here? And even before that meeting takes place, the Bible says because of the healing that took place and the sermon that followed after that, 5,000 people were added to the church that day. Look at your neighbor and say 5,000. Take a second and wrap your head around that for, you know, just 5,000 people because of one encounter with God. Just one. 5,000. So the religious leaders have some questions, Acts chapter 4 verse says, By what sort of power or in whose name did you do this healing? And remember, this is after they've placed them in jail for a night. I don't know if it was to have them have a different story or say, you know, it was by happenstance. You know, perhaps the stars aligned that day. And so maybe the crippled man, it was his lucky day. And, you know, he won the healing lottery. And, but no. Acts 4.8. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, responds, it is through Jesus that this man was healed. It wasn't because he did anything else. It was because Jesus healed him. And the Bible continues to say in, four, in Acts 4.12 that there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men. By which we must be saved. We need to say that together. That, that needs to seep in your spirit. Say with me. And there is salvation in no one else. I need to repeat that again. In no one else. No one else. Look at your neighbor. No one else. Look at your other neighbor. No one else. If you don't have a neighbor, speak to yourself. No one else. Hallelujah. Still with me? For there is no other name under heaven given among, name, given among men by which we must be saved. Say that ten times faster. And then the Bible continues to say, now that they've answered their question, you know, the, the, the religious leaders didn't like that answer very much. But it continues to say in Acts 4.13, now when they saw the boldness, there's that word again, look at your neighbor, trouble. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished. And they recognized, oh I love this part, that they had been with Jesus. I like how the Passion Translation says this. They began to understand the effect Jesus had on them by simply spending time with him. Let me say that. Oof, I, whoo, I'm about to run. They began to understand the effect that Jesus had on them by simply spending time with him. Simply spending time with Jesus can provide some serious results. S simply spending time with Jesus can change your worldview. Simply spending time with Jesus can transform the world. 
So my first question to you today, and look at your neighbor and say there will be other questions. Can people around you tell that you have spent time with Jesus? When you wake up in the morning, can your spouse tell that you've spent time with Jesus? When you talk to your children, can they tell that you spent time with Jesus? When you go to work, can your co-workers tell that you spent time with Jesus? When you're driving and that one person cuts you off, even if they're in the other car, can they tell you spent time with Jesus? When you're at the grocery store, can they tell you spent time with Jesus? Oh, Lifebridge Church, can Fort Wayne tell that we've spent time with Jesus? And if the answer is no, or not yet, will you decide right here, right now, that you will begin to start spending time with him? Will you have a resolve that you will begin to st start spending time with Jesus? That you will make it a high priority to spend time with Jesus? Dare I say you will make it a daily responsibility to spend time with Jesus because I tell you when you simply spend time with Jesus things begin to happen you, you you're not just justified in Christ Jesus you are sanctified in Christ Jesus and when he returns you will be glorified with King Jesus that if you're here right here right now and you're like Y'all are weird. You're singing songs and, and there's a guy practically shouting at me on stage and telling me I need to spend time with Jesus. And, 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 and you're saying, I don't know this Jesus. This is your moment. You're in the right place. There's no place I'd rather you be than right here, right now. If you are online and you're saying, I don't know this Jesus. I want to start spending time with him. You are in the right place. You are watching the right channel. The right here, right now, all you have to say, Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender all. I lay me down. I am yours and you are mine. Change my life. He will do it. Take that, take that decision. Do it now. Don't wait any longer. Don't wait till after you've eaten the fifth burger for you to start talking about Jesus. You're like, oh, Jesus, my tummy. Mm. This is your moment. And then after all this has happened, the religious leaders, since they don't like the answer that they, after they, you know, after they looked at them, kind of judged them already, those common and educated, you know, people. They told them, um, so this is, what, this is what is going to happen. You're going to stop preaching in this name, and, you, and you're going to go away. The religious leaders ordered them to stop Spreading the name of Jesus. Take a moment. Think about this week. Think about the, the beautiful nation that we call home. Think about the things that are going around us. Are you seeing a common thread here? That more and more it is becoming trickier to spread the name of Jesus. There are people right now who are part of the church of God who are being persecuted. Because of this name, Jesus. You might see people in Hollywood, you know, throwing out Jesus in a movie right there. And it's not that they're seeking revival or that they're seeking repentance. They're using it as a cuss word. Have mercy on us, Jesus. But this name, Jesus, has power. It's one thing for you, and please do not do this. Don't go and experiment. There are things we don't experiment. Don't go take, you know, metal silverware and plug it in into your outlet. Now, that's, there's power right there. But there's, there's a whole different level of power when you go and hold the transformer. There's a difference for those of you who know a little bit about electricity. There's AC and DC. DC is really, the DC is where the power is at. There is power in the name of Jesus. 
I don't think that, that did not sink. There is power in the name of Jesus. And so the religious leaders are telling them, stop spreading this name of Jesus. But Peter responds, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we've seen and heard. So the question is, as you're spending time with Jesus, do you speak of what you've seen and heard? Do you testify? When was the last time you gave someone a testimony? We read the Old Testament and the New Testament. Testament meaning what? We're being, we're reading what God did in those days, in the lives of those people, in very specific ways. And right here, right now, on this beautiful Sunday... When was the last time you spoke about what you've seen and heard from God? When was the last time you shared, you testified, you encouraged, you strengthened, you comfort because you simply spent time with Jesus? The Bible says a notable sign was performed. The religious leaders could not deny it. The evidence was right there. The formerly crippled man was standing healed next to Peter and John. The religious leaders asked themselves, what shall, we, what shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them that is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. When God begins to move, you can't deny it. Let that encourage someone this morning. When God begins to move, you can't deny it. You can try all day. You can close your eyes, blink 50 times faster. You cannot deny it. When God begins to move through you, hallelujah, you have potential. God can and God will move through you. Be encouraged. And when God is moving, the glory goes back to him. We go back to Acts 4, 21, verse, uh, through 20, 21 and 22. And when they had further threatened them, they being the religious leaders, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all were praising God for what had happened. For the man on whom the sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. So I ask you another question. If Jesus is the answer, how do we pray in response? If Jesus is the one who heals, if Jesus is the one who restores, if Jesus is the one who cleanses, how do we pray in response? I believe that we are supposed to pray with an expectant heart. For those of you who have had family members who are pregnant, there's an expectation. I remember... When my wife was pregnant, we were, we were excited for we knew in, in nine months or in X amount of months, there was going to be a miracle that was going to come forth. You know, when you go to that first ultrasound and, and you can see the baby and you're like, oh, yeah, I did a thing. You're like, Lord, I, I can see the miracle. When you're expectant, there, there's a longing on the inside of you to see the fullness of what is on the inside. Come what? Come forth. That we as the church, that we as children of the Most High God, that we should pray with expectation. And dare I say, expectation for miracles. Acts 4.29 verses 30. So the, Peter and John have been harassed. They've been jailed, short of being beaten. Uh, they've been warned not to go preach in the name of Jesus. They are let go. And Acts 4 verses 29 to 30 says, they come together, they gather together with their church, and they, say, and they pray this bold prayer. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you, notice the pattern here, and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. So I ask you, why are we bold for other things except for a move of God? There are people who will argue with you about the most random stuff, and they do it boldly. And you're over there, a child of God, and you're like, um, just going to, you know, I'm going to tread carefully. Have you ever told yourself that? 
Tread carefully. We are bold about why meat lasagna is better than veggie lasagna or veggie lasagna is better than uh, you know, meat lasagna. You're, you're bold about why pizzas or uh, pineapple should be on pizza and why it should not be. We are bold about color choices. We are bold about temperature choices. We are bold about clothing choices. But when it comes to the name of Jesus, where is your boldness? You can, if you're a car person, you can argue with some about why a V8 is better than a power Tesla. And, you know, you can go block their chargers and you can do all this other stuff. But where is your boldness when it comes to the word of God? Where is your boldness when you need to testify of what God has done? Where is your boldness when you're worshiping God? Why do, why do some people worship God as if, you know, he's, we're just here for the sake of being here. And when we're done, there's a grill with my name waiting on it. Or wait, there's a grill with my name on it waiting for me when I go home. Or I cannot wait, you know, to go to this. But when, when it comes to the things of God, boldness just takes a back seat. What happened? But, look at your neighbor and say, but, B-U-T, not T. Not, not two T's, B-U-T. When we are expectant, dare I say desperate for a move of God, and we pray and we seek his face and we preach the gospel, this is what happens, Acts 4.31. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all not some, not a few. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. That when you're expecting for God to move, when you say, God, you're it. There is no plan B, C, D, E. There is no 401K when it comes to the plan of God. When you're saying, God, you're it. God, my whole being, all that I am, trust in you. God, it is you and only you. When you're at that place of expectation for, for a move of God, when you're at that place where you're, you're, so, de you're so desperate and, and you're crying out to God and, and you're expectant, you're, you're mustering every ounce of faith that is in you and then some, even go borrow your neighbor's faith. And you're like, God, I need you to move. God, I need you to move. God, this situation cannot stay as it, as it has been. Like the woman with the issue of blood, you can say, I have dealt with this for 12 years. I can see Jesus walking. I am not staying back. I am going to be bold, and I'm going to go after my miracle. I'm going to go after my breakthrough. I'm going to trust God to, to, to do something that only he can do. God answers. We worship a God who's not passive. We worship an active God. I don't know about you, when you read the Bible, I, I hope that, that something on the inside of you begins to leap for joy. I hope that something on the inside of you, as you spend time with Jesus, I hope that something on the inside of you starts to shake. That fear begins to shake. That worry begins to, to fall away. That, that the doubt begins to worry and say, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. That you can walk like Peter and John did. And look at situations that are completely heartbreaking and say, hey, I may not have the world's solution to your issue, but I serve a God. But I know a God. But I worship a God. Who can answer? Who can bring forth breakthrough? Who can do for you what I cannot do, even on my best day? Prayer team, if you don't mind, I'll have you come up. I don't know about you, church, but... I'm expectant for a move of God. I have seen and I have heard what God has done and what he can do. Perhaps there are ministries you watch on TV and you see all these miracles that are taking place and you're saying, man, I wish I would get a taste of that. Perhaps there's a situation you're dealing with that it's, you know, you've only uh, maybe shared with a few people and, and, and it's, you, your life right now is, 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 is chaotic and, and, and you're heavy. You're carrying stuff. And, and you heard a testimony of how God moved in a somewhat situation like yours and saying, man, God, I wish you could, you could do the same for me. I don't know if there were other cripples that day 
at the gate beautiful, who saw what God did through Peter and John, but, but perhaps after they saw what God did for him, something on the inside of them broke and they said, yes, God, I know you will do it for me. That just that one interaction brought 5,000 people in a deep relationship with God. That 5,000 were added to, 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 to the church that day because Peter and John were bold enough, bold enough, bold enough to declare the word of God. And God supported that by stretching his hand and performing a miracle. That whatever miracles, signs, and wonders you're seeking for God, can we just take a moment and, and pray together in unity and ask him, and ask him to grant us to continue to speak his word with all boldness. And that when we do our part, when we testify, when we declare his word, when we accept and believe in his word. The Bible declares that the word that goes out from God does not return to him void. But it accomplishes everything that it was said to do. And the Bible continues to say that it pleases God in accomplishing that word. That God is looking for you and I to take our rightful, our rightful place and to declare his word. You don't have to be on a pulpit like this one. You can declare the word of God in your family. You can live out the word of God in your workplace. You can live out the word of God in traffic. You can live out the word of God in a world that may not be ready to accept him. But when they see what God has done through you, come on now. They cannot deny it. They cannot deny it. They cannot deny it. The Sanhedrin, those Jewish leaders, the Sadducees, they could have, you know, they could have put Peter and John in jail over and over and over again. But there was a crippled man, formerly, for over 40 years, who had the evidence that Jesus heals. He was a walking, leaping, and praising testimony that Jesus heals. There's an expectation on the inside of me for God to do it again. And not just healing, but miracles, signs, and wonders. Not that so the charismatic church can do funky things. No. But because the world is looking for answers. And guess what? You and I are the conduit through which God answers. You and I you are praying and hoping a missionary will go to your community and do something. You are that missionary, FYI. If you didn't know, now you know. This is our moment, LifeBridge. This is our moment. You're a manager. You're an employee. You're a business owner. This is your moment. God will and can still use you to make his name known. Even in the secular marketplace, it is not impossible for him. The days of people relying on pastors alone to do all the work are gone. It is you and I together seeking and saying, God, look at the threats around us. Look at what the world is doing. Look at all the laws that are being passed. Look at the persecution that is taking place. But God, we look to you above all of that. And we ask that you would give us the boldness to continue to continue, to continue what you did on Calvary, to continue what you said we would do, that we would go into all the ends of the earth, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we would continue to see our harvest come into place. The church, this is our moment. Will you trust God for the boldness to continue? And this is what the Bible says, that when you are bold in continuing, that he stretches his hand, his hand of authority, his hand of power, his hand of love, his hand of healing, to heal, to perform miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of who? Jesus. I'm expecting for some miracles in my life. What are you expecting for? If 
there is a need, I don't care how big or small or what the doctor said or what your neighbor said or what your wife said or what your kids said or whatever it is, we've declared the word of God. Can, can you join me in trusting him to stretch his healing hand right here, right now? I know you've got plans. I know there's a grill waiting for you. I know there's a lake house waiting for you. But, but right here, right now, in this few moments, can we just enter in and ask him to heal, to perform a miracle, to do something that only he can do, that the evidence, you might walk out of those double doors with evidence, with something tangible that God has come through for you. If you can stand, stand. If you can kneel, kneel. Whatever you need to do. If you need to run to the altar and, and connect with the prayer team so they can pray for you, this is your moment. We're not going to, you know, do weird things to make you feel like God is here. God is here. Don't doubt it. He is here. Right here, right now. Let there be a memory on Memorial Day that you will never forget again. God wants to do something. God wants to heal. Maybe for some of you, you're saying, Steve, I lack the boldness. When I open my mouth, the words disappear or I lose my train of thought. Well, we can pray for that too. That God would give you boldness. Boldness. That when you open your mouth, Oh, glory to God. People are like, who are you again? And the Bible says because they did this, because they came together and they prayed and they asked God to give them that boldness. And they asked God to move like only he can. Just the next chapter over in, in Acts chapter 5, I believe it's verses 12. It says that healing miracles, signs and wonders were, were following so much so that people were lining up that the shadow the shadow of Peter would fall upon them that they would be healed. The Bible says, if you think that's not crazy enough, go to Acts chapter 19. That Paul in Ephesus, I mean, this is an area that was deep in idolatry. They were worshiping foreign gods. They were into all sorts of funky stuff. The Bible says that God was moving so powerfully that cloths, little fabric, that Paul had touched, that people would take that all over the city and people were getting healed. Tell me what God can do. This is your moment. God, I pray for anyone who desires boldness to declare your word. They've been timid. They've been intimidated by things around them, by people around them. God, I pray right here, right now that you would saturate them with your boldness. You would give them a boldness to testify of your goodness. You would give them a boldness to testify that you have transformed their lives. You would give them a boldness, Lord God, to, to go forth in their sphere of influence and, and, and shine your light and, and spread the gospel with, with a fervor like they've never done before. God, we pray right now for anyone who desires a miracle. Perhaps it's a health issue. Perhaps, God, it's a financial need. Perhaps, God, it's, it's a relationship issue. Perhaps, God, it's, it's, it's a deep brokenness and, and, and a hurt, God, that, that, Lord, they've tried everything, but, but now they're, they're trusting you. They've heard the word of God transforms it. They've heard that there is no other name by which we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. And they're crying out to you as blind Bartimaeus did, that son of David, have mercy on me. See me in my situation. God, I pray that you would stretch your healing hand right here and right now and heal in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I ask that you would bring forth that financial breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. God, there are business people here, God, who's, they have deep questions about how they're going to proceed forward or how they're going to go to the next level. They feel stuck. They don't know what to do. God, I pray right now that you would perform a miracle and give them divine wisdom and knowledge to know how to proceed to the next level. God, there are people who are trusting you right now for estranged family members, God. They've tried interventions. They've tried uh, come to Jesus conversations. They've tried everything that 
that they know, God, short of harassing them, Lord. They've done everything they, they know to do, but God, they are trusting you for breakthrough for those family members, God, that the prodigals would come back home in the name of Jesus. God, as, as, as Lifebridge Church, we are expectant for a move of God. We are hungry for a move of God. We, the Bible declares that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake shall be filled. And God, we pray that you would mark us today. Not as a hyper, you know, hyperized, uh, emotionalized, um, energized, uh, charismatic church or anything like that. But as, but as children of God who are hungry and who desire to see God move. That for Wayne has yet to see what God can truly do. We remember what you've done in the past and we give you glory for that. We remember what you did on the cross and we give you glory for that. But God, I know that there is greater that you want to do. God, I know there is more that you want to do and you're looking for someone. You're looking for a group of people. You're looking for a church that is saying, yes, Lord, here we are. Use me. God, I pray that right now you would just pour out your spirit on our flesh. Holy Spirit, fill this place and shake and shake and shake. Shake every fear. Shake every doubt, every hindrance, anything that has kept us from truly experiencing the fullness of who you are. Lord, we, we give you access to those vulnerable places. Oh God, we are expectant for miracles, signs, and wonders. We are, we are expectant as a church for financial breakthrough, God. That Lord, even with that five-year goal, God, we thank you for the finances are there. God, we pray that you would accelerate that timeline. I just need someone, you know, you know what your situation is, just cry out to the name of Jesus right now. He is here. He is here. Just cry out to the name of Jesus. He is here. Some of you have been doing ministry for so long and you feel alone. You, you feel stagnant. You feel stuck. The last time refreshing was a theme in your life it's been a while I want to tell you right here right now in the name of Jesus there's refreshing taking place that the fire that God placed in you that anointing that calling is is being awakened to a new level some of you used to have dreams and visions and God was giving you strategic input on how to respond to situations or, or how to plan and, and, and how to, to go into a certain situation and, and it feels like those have dried up for so long. Right now in the name of Jesus, those are being awakened again. That you will have overwhelming, say with me, overwhelming dreams and visions but not for the sake of overwhelming you but you will also have clarity to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and with boldness you will act. Oh, thank you, God. Yes, Lord, stretch your healing hand and perform miracle signs and wonders. Oh, God, give us the boldness to live for you every single day. Even when it's hard, God. Even when our lives are at stake. Even when we are threatened. God, give us boldness. Oh, God, give us boldness. Cry out with me. Oh, God, give us boldness. Oh, God, give us boldness to declare your word. Oh, God, give us boldness to testify. Oh, God, we cannot be silent anymore. God, we cannot be silent anymore. Lifebridge cannot be silent anymore. The Church of Christ in Fort Wayne cannot be silent anymore. God, you are too good. God, you are too holy. God, you are too great for us to stay silent. And God, we pray as we declare who you are, that you would stretch your healing hand. 
and perform healing, miracles, signs, and wonders to the glory and to the honor of your name. God, we pray for any who have medical procedures this week that that healing would be confirmed before the lay before they lay down on the operation table. God, I pray for anyone who has back issues this morning that right now your healing hand would touch them and you would restore and heal and make whole again now in the name of Jesus. Any form of pain that has been coursing through their veins, we rebuke it now and we command it to leave and we call forth the healing power of God now in the name of Jesus. I want to pray right now for anyone who has a terminal diagnosis. They've told you to make your plans. They told you to make peace with your situation. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. It's not because God is punishing you. It's not because you sinned and now, you know, some bad thing is coming. We don't believe in karma. We rebuke that mindset in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, do a miracle right now. The religious leaders thought that Jesus would stay on the grave. But three days later, three days later, three days later, something happened. God, we're asking right now that you would reverse any terminal diagnosis that has been made in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We speak life to that which has been declared dead right now in the name of Jesus. God, your word said that you did it for Lazarus and so we have something that we can grasp on and we say, God, it may look smelly, it may look fishy, it may look covered up, but right now in the name of Jesus, dead things come back to life now. In Jesus' name. God, I pray that a spirit of worship would arise in our hearts. That we would be excited to seek you. To spend time with you. To know you. And as the Bible says, that a fragrance would begin to overflow out of us. A fragrance of your beauty and your splendor and your majesty. That people would look at us and ask us, what is it that you do? What are you doing that I'm not doing? And that God, we would declare it boldly with a big old smile on our face and tell them, let me introduce you to King Jesus. For one, anyone who feels uneducated, for anyone who feels like they don't have a master's in divinity, for anyone who feels that they don't have the right training, or when you read the Bible, it feels more like Greek than it does English. God, we pray right now that you'd open their understanding. You'd give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that they would know that they are qualified to boldly declare the name of God. Thank you, God. Can you just thank the Lord with me? Can we just worship him and exalt him for what he has done, for what he is doing, for what he will continue to do? God, we give you glory. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Yes, Lord, we bless you. Yes, Lord, we glorify you. Yes, Lord, we magnify you. Yes, Lord, we, we humble ourselves before you. There is no other God like you. We bless your name, King Jesus. 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 Don't stop now. Hallelujah. 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 Holy, holy, holy. Yes, God, we exalt you. Lift up your voice with me, Lafayette Church. I don't know if, if, if where you come from, things are passive. Right now, that changes. We are bold before the King of Kings. We are bold before the Lord of Lords. We can come boldly before the throne of His grace. We can clap boldly in His house today. We can lift up our voices boldly in His house because we know King Jesus. King Jesus lives on the inside of us. King Jesus died for us. King Jesus died for us. King Jesus rose again so that you and I can make his name famous. Hallelujah. 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 There is joy in the house of the Lord this morning. 
There is peace in the house of the Lord this morning. There is favor in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Yes, Lord. Wow. I think uh, it might be time to go home now. However, you don't have to go if you don't want to. You just want to, you know, linger in God's house for a few more minutes. It's okay. If you have plans, it's okay to leave. But church, I hope have a seat if you'd like to. I hope that I ruined your day for the right reasons. I hope that God met you like that man at the gate beautiful, thinking it was going to be another Sunday. Thinking it was going to be another, you know, little ordinary memorial, you know, nice, nice Sunday so you can go home and do your thing. No, I hope that you've been ruined for the ordinary and that now you are expectant for the extra ordinary for the things that God can do through you not you can do through yourself that God can do through you I pray this week that people will testify that they will see you and say um, something's different I can't put my finger on it but something is different I don't know what changed. I don't know what kind of sweet tea you had on Memorial Day, but something is different. I pray that you will have the boldness to tell them, yes, I am different. I spent some time with Jesus. Let me tell you about it. Oh, God is good. Amen. Amen. How do you end a service like this? Man? God is good. Church, be blessed as you go and travel for those who are traveling. As you spend time with family, for those of you who have the unfortunate pleasure of working, whatever your day looks like, that you will encounter the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That, that there will be an overflow. <sighs> Hallelujah. That the Holy Spirit will overflow in you and through you to the glory of God the Father. We cannot wait to see you next Sunday. We love you. God bless you.